Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Peace IT's session on Client Side Network Setup Part 3. Today we're going to discuss the difference between the various network profiles, firewall settings, setting up an alternative IP address, and network card properties. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. So let's begin by discussing the difference between the home, work, and public network profiles. Home networks. Well, Windows Firewall classifies home networks as private. Network discovery is turned on by default. That means the PC is visible and discoverable by other PCs on the network. Home groups can be created and joined using this profile. Now let's move on to the work networks profile. Windows Firewall classifies work networks as private as well. Network discovery is turned on by default here as well. But home groups cannot be created or joined from a works network profile. The last of the profiles is public network. Windows Firewall classifies public networks as well, public. Network discovery is turned off by default, and it's harder to be seen or to see other devices on networks using this whole file. Now let's discuss firewall settings. We begin our discussion on firewall settings by talking about Windows XP firewall. Windows XP's firewall gives you three tabs. There's the general tab. You can turn the firewall on, and you can also allow or disallow exceptions from this tab. Speaking of exceptions, let's move on to that tab. This allows specific traffic to reach the PC or to leave the PC. There are five predefined exception rules that can be enabled or disabled from here. Programs and ports can be exceptions. The last tab is advanced. That's more than just the basic. If you have two network interface cards that need different firewall settings, not a problem with the advanced tab. The advanced tab also allows for logging of firewall traffic. Windows Firewall turns off ICMP responses by default. It can be turned on from the advanced tab. Now let's discuss firewall settings for Windows Vista and Windows 7. Let's discuss basic firewall configuration. You can reach Windows Firewall from the control panel. The home page allows the user to see basic information. If you choose the Turn Windows Firewall On or Off link, this provides some more control over firewall behavior. The Allow a Program or Feature through Windows Firewall link provides basic control over some exceptions. Now, Windows Firewall with advanced security added more functionality. Rules can be created for both inbound and outbound traffic. Rules can be configured by IP address, network ID, ports, protocols, or application. Rules can be based on network profile. Does it only affect private or public network? So now let's discuss alternative IP addressing. Now, alternative IP addressing can be a good tool for a mobile user. Why is that? Well, not all networks use DHCP. If a mobile user travels between locations and one of those networks does not use DHCP, then when the user gets to that location, their mobile device will not connect. So in order to connect, you need to input an alternative IP address. So how can that be done? Well, you go to the, the network interface card in your system. You select properties. From the properties, you select Internet Protocol V4, and from there you select Properties. That will bring you to the configuration page. Now, if you're using DHCP, you will have access to the alternate configuration page. Click on that, and that gives you access to the page where you get to set up the information for the alternate IP address. Now, in order to fill this out properly, you need to know which IP address to use and which submask is valid. You also need to know the location of the DNS server and default gateway. So now let's move on to Network Card Properties, NICs. Oops, that's the wrong NIC. There we go. 
when you're talking about network card properties, NIC properties, the first thing that we need to discuss is duplex. There is half duplex and full duplex. Half duplex means that the NIC can send or receive, but it can only do one at a time. Full duplex, on the other hand, means that your NIC can send and receive at the same time. All NICs have a rated speed. Speed is usually determined by bits per second. That's lowercase b, p, s, which is vastly different than bytes per second, which is capital B, P, S. And the difference is an order of magnitude of 8. You should know which speed your NIC can operate at. Some NICs have a wake on land feature. What that means is that when the PC is turned off, there is a little bit of trickle power that is supplied to the NIC, which is listening for a wake up signal on the network. The network can send out a time sub signal and the NIC can actually boot the PC from the signal. Then there's QoS, quality of service. That's the ability to give priority to certain network traffic in order to improve performance of a given application or service. QoS is often utilized in situations where voice over IP is used as the voice traffic needs a high priority to ensure clear communication. Now that concludes this session on client-side network setup part three. We discussed various network profiles, firewall settings, alternate IP addressing, and we concluded with discussing network interface card properties. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for viewing this session and I'm sure there will be some more.